I've got the recipe for you. This dip is just amazing. It just melts in the mouth. Bon Appetit. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and I'm joining you today from beautiful downtown Columbia, South Carolina. I'm so excited to be partnering with Okra Magazine for the second time and we've got a splendid episode today. We're going to be joining Chef Wes Fulmer that's going to be featured in the magazine in November for some great recipes at Motor Supply. We're going to start with a pan seared pork chop. It's served with a delicious warm corn spoon bread pudding. It is just delicious. And then how about fried Brussels sprouts with a tomato jam, all made organically and deliciously by Chef Wes. Then in Vera's Corner today, we're going to show you what to do with those pumpkin seeds after you carve that halibut wing pumpkin. So without further ado, let's go inside and meet Chef Wes. Okay, everybody, I'm so excited to introduce you to Chef Wes Fulmer. We're right here at Motor Supply in Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Well, and you know, we partner with Okra Magazine, and mm -hmm. you are being featured in their November issue. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So all of you are going to learn more about him, but you're really going to learn about him today. So I want to start by asking you, you know, what sparked this interest in food? Well, food's all about memories to me, and um, one of the memories I have is sitting around the table with my um, two older brothers, mom and dad, and that's the time when we got a chance to share how our day went and everything. So, so you're the youngest of two brothers. Mm -hmm. So did you actually get to eat, or were y'all in the middle fighting? What was going on here? I try to always sneak the best piece of chicken. Okay, or the best thing that was what I was hoping. I'm in the middle of five, <laughs> so I, I understand. But you know, in terms of being here at Motor Supply, you've been here since 2014. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about how all of that came about. Well, as I was living in Charleston, uh, me and my wife just had our first kid and um, was looking for a, um, um, I guess, a, a, a better better position in this industry. Um, I, I saw that Motor Supply was hiring an executive chef and um, with uh, thinking that my resume wasn't good enough, my skills were, um, I uh, went for it. And um, Well, now you're leaving something out. You said that your wife really pushed you and she promoted you going oh, after that position, yes. which I just, I love that part of, of your story. <laughs> she so, knew what she was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is, what would be an influential moment for you in terms of something that you did that might have also influenced your career? Well, early on, what, decided, what made me decide to go to um, culinary school was after I read um, Anthony Bourdain's Kitchen Confidential. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, and it, it really uh, stuck to me and uh, made me, I wanted to read it over and over and over again. And so it was just fascinating to me. Gosh, so. you know, and I'm sure he's had that effect, that book has had that mm -hmm. effect on many people. Well, speaking of having effects in the workplace, I know you are very, very fond of the owner here, Eddie Wells, and working with him. So tell us a little bit about how he came into being um, Motor Supply. Okay. Uh, yeah, he you know he uh, he was general manager here up until 2000. He decided to buy the business, and um, it was under his leadership and his uh, motivation that where we became um, kind of the first farm to table um, uh, restaurant um, in the Midlands. And so uh, from there on, and you know, I always like to say he's the best boss I ever had. Gosh. He um, he lets me do my thing, and um, you know. Um, and we really thrive like that. So. Well, and it, it is so, you know, I've had so many people say to me that, you know, it's just a noted restaurant. People drive in from all over the South Carolina area to eat here. So today we are making two recipes that are going to be, you know, that we're featuring. So we have got a lot to do in the yep. kitchen. I know you're ready to get in there. So y'all stick around because we're going to get started on the seared pork chop. I cannot wait. <laughs> so come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me I'm with Chef Wes Fulmer mm -hmm. from Motor Supply in Columbia and you've also missed the fact that I had an unbelievable dinner over there, enjoyed drinks at the bar, it was phenomenal. So thank you so much for coming to Augusta and joining me in the kitchen today and uh, we are going to make a very southern dish. Mm -hmm. 
spoon bread. If you're not from around here, you might not know what that is. So give us a little idea of that. So uh, spoon bread, it, it, it actually comes from, um, from serving it with a spoon. Um, and um, it comes from the, the first mention of spoon bread in the United States was from a um, cookbook by Sarah Rutledge in 1847 called Carolina Housewife. Carolina Housewife. Do, do you know 1847? I'm sure that's a great <laughs> read. Well, we've got a lot of ingredients here, so why don't we get started with mixing this up? All right, so um, first of all, I'm going to take my cornmeal. And I'm going to take all the dirty all dishes. Right. I'm going to be good all for right. something today. And do your flour. And that's just okay. plain AP flour, and right? It, yes, just plain AP flour. Um, baking powder. A little bit of uh, cayenne to spice the things up a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. We'll put the sugar in, and at this point, I'm going to kind of... I'm liking it so far. I'm going to kind of mix this up to get it all kind of blended in. You know, the thing about a lot of this kind of stuff, it's almost hard sometimes to make a recipe out of something that's just in your head. It is. So he was very nice to us and has put this recipe together so you all can make this. Now that's lard. So yeah, this is lard. You can't, you can't um, do any southern bacon without having lard, right? <laughs> so, and then of course, uh, everybody's favorite, the butter. All right. And is the butter cold or room temperature? Or room what? temperature, okay. room temperature, you want to. Uh, um, and then we're going to take a pastry blender and kind of mix this up a little bit. And you said at the restaurant you just have got gloves on and you're mixing that with your hands. So yes, yeah, a lot like, like a lot like, like um, cornmeal. Yeah, and a lot like uh, like a pie dough recipe. Um, just kind of get them flat and stuff like that. So. Okay. All right. So I well, think can that's I start good. mixing these wet ingredients together? Absolutely. Um, we got uh, we got corn Tell puree. Tell us about this corn puree that you did it ahead. So the corn puree basically. Um, Basically, it's just it's just raw corn into a blender and just blend it up until it becomes very smooth and um, and velvety, um, like so. Um, then we're gonna add our corn, our um, just loose corn, fresh cut, and the uh, the shallot and thyme mixture, uh, which is already sautéed off. We want to sauté it until it comes a little bit translucent, oh, just to sweat them down a little that. bit to get all that flavor in there. Gosh, mm, that just smells wonderful. So these ingredients just in terms of how this is going to mix up. Okay, so now we're going to do the buttermilk the right buttermilk. in here. Okay, now I'll take this wood spoon okay. right here so I can Absolutely. mix it up. Gosh. And I really like buttermilk. Buttermilk add, always adds that, that, uh, that uh, acid to the dish that you, you want. You know my so. mother actually drank buttermilk. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. All right, and then we're going to we're gonna mix this up pretty pretty well. Um, you know, you wanna um, be a little bit gentle with it, but it's not that big a deal. And then we're gonna mix in our uh, corn puree with it. Okay, so do I add all of this at once? You can, you can. Um, Are you ready for it? Oh yeah, there you go. Well, we make a good team right here. I think so, I think so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna check the payroll and see. Uh, if see there's if room for me there. at Motor Supply. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna put a, we went ahead and whipped these egg whites ahead of time, and I'm gonna do one quick spin on those again to right. get them back a little bit stiff. And then this is the magic right here, right? Right, That yeah. bacon powder is magical, but these egg whites are really Take magic. That, uh, yeah. So what you wanna do, you, you wanna just put a third of the mixture in here first. Okay. And we always say like that's gonna be a sacrifice. Sacrificial lamb, if you will. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna we're gonna get the get the uh, get it started Ooh. a little bit with a, just a little fold over. Now, if you if you use a, a whisk on this, you're, what you're gonna do, you're gonna break down everything that you accomplished with uh, fluffing okay, up the Okay. So egg grab rice. a little bit more, yep. and as we go to break, let me tell you that we're gonna talk about in Vera's corner today what to do with those pumpkin seeds when you carve that jack o' lantern, and then when we come back, we're gonna see Chef West put together his fried Brussels sprouts and a tomato jam, y'all, you've got to come back. Chances are you're probably going to be carving at least one pumpkin this season. When you're finished, don't throw away the seeds, but instead use them to make a crunchy snack. To start, preheat your oven to 250 degrees and line a sheet pan with foil. 
Once you've cut into the pumpkin, use a spoon or ice cream scoop to remove everything from inside the pumpkin and place into a large bowl. Next, separate the seeds from the pith. The easiest way to do this is to grab a big chunk and use your fingertips to pull out the seeds. Place into a colander and put the pith back into the bowl. When you've removed as many of the seeds as you can, rinse them well to get them good and clean. Pat the seeds dry with a towel. Here's where you can get creative. There are many different ways to season pumpkin seeds, from simple olive oil and salt, to Worcestershire, to cinnamon and sugar. Choose your favorite or divide up the seeds and create a sampler. Spread the seeds in a single layer on the sheet pan, then bake for 45 minutes. Bump the heat up to 325 and bake for another five minutes to make them extra crispy. Enjoy warm or allow to cool before storing in an airtight container. Welcome back everybody and you know what? Vera's Corner today has some ideas for you when you're cutting those pumpkins out with those boys. Oh yeah? Close to Halloween, <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. So I hope you'll try that. And you know, we were kind of busy during the break. Mm -hmm. We got through with the spoon bread, just got everything folded, those egg whites just looked fantastic. We put it into a spring form pan, but if you don't have a spring form pan, you can use just a regular uh, cake pan mm -hmm. or a casserole dish would be perfect. And then you got it in the oven. Right. And then you gave me the tip, because I know many times I'm just kind of trying to maneuver with water in the pan. Put the pan in the oven first, right. and then add the water, Vera. Right, right. So I learned something from you today. So now, you've, we've been kind of busy getting ready for this, so tell us about what we're getting ready to do next. Um, we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, start on the tomato jam. Um, okay. Very simple recipe, so we have our, our onions, a little bit of oil in the pan, I got some onions. Right there, um, and of course, uh, anytime I try to use uh, onions, I, um, I want to put my favorite ingredient of all time in there, which is uh, just chopped fresh thyme. Ooh. Okay. Um, and then we we, and we had a little bit of olive oil at the bottom of the pan too. We uh, concussed some uh, some uh, tomatoes over here, or I should say, we scored them, cored them, uh, blanched them for about 45 uh, seconds, and then peeled them and chopped them up. Oh, okay. Um, so so we're I'm going to add in. that in? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And that was such an easy, that wasn't a hard process at all. Mm -mm. Gosh, that's smelling um, good already. And then you're going to add your sugar in. Um, we got one more um, ingredient after the sugar. It is one of my favorite ingredients as well is rice wine vinegar. Wow. Adds a little bit of umami flavor to it. Okay, so then this is just going to cook like forever. Mm -hmm. Forever, <laughs> yes. Forget about it and walk away. And am I using all this vinegar? You just want to just slightly cover them. That'll okay. be good right there. That's so. perfect. All right. And so now, while this is cooking down, we're going to get started on these Brussels sprouts. Okay, cool. This is one of my uh, favorite uh, things to do with Brussels sprouts because I love Brussels sprouts really crispy and everything. So we're going to bring the oil to about uh, 375. And Which then, is dead perfect right now. <laughs> and we're gonna you be careful when you do this, but we're gonna put them down in the oil and just let them just let them hang out in there for a little bit. Oh wow! Whoop. Okay, so one of the things is when you rinse these Brussels sprout leaves, that's where that water. There's also moisture in there, so you know when you rinse them off, be sure to get them good and dry. And we did, but there's just always a little bit of moisture. And you know, every Brussels sprout's different. Um, and basically, we, we're looking for it to just start to crisp up and start to get a little bit golden brown. Um, All right. So, in terms of, of this dish, is this one of your unique creations? Well, I've been around a lot of uh, Brussels sprouts in my life, I should say. And uh, th this is one of my favorite ways to do Brussels sprouts. Uh, a lot of people do it, and what we're going to, I love using fish sauce. Um, okay. And it just adds an extra unami, extra um, flavor um, profile to your dish. And basically, we'll take this out, we'll toss them a little bit of salt um, and the um, fish sauce, which I add a little bit of lime juice as well, and then we'll finish off with a little lemon and salt. Well, and you know, rest. I think things kind of transition along the way. I remember growing up as a child, I wouldn't touch okra. 
because it was slimy and yucky. And then somebody came up with the idea of frying it. Mm -hmm. Well, then everybody started eating it like French fries. <laughs> and I think the same thing is happening here. Yes. Is that Brussels sprouts didn't used to show up on menus. Mm -hmm. And this whole farm to table movement, which you are so definitely defined in yes that you know your restaurant uses local ingredients you do in fact the day when i was there today somebody came in with okra yep that was uh nat bradford uh, his family farm uh bradford watermelons um and they uh he the brought me sweetest awesome. watermelon ever yes oh my gosh all right so we are going to get this out and that these are just going to just they're continuing to cook and get nice and crisp and when we come back from the break, we're going to get everything lined up for this presentation. All of the components that we've done today are the bridesmaids to the bride, which is going to be <laughs> a beautiful pork chop that he's going mm -hmm. to show you how to cut off the rack. So come back with us and we'll get this meal going. All right. everybody and I don't want this day to end. It has been amazing and I am so appreciative of Okra Magazine for making this mm -hmm. introduction between the two of us but you've had so many accolades recently that you had to keep a secret from me because <laughs> you were just named the for the fifth year in a row with the Free Times in Columbia, the best restaurant in mm -hmm. Columbia, the best chef Mm -hmm. Southern Living Magazine has awarded out of the top 10 restaurants in the Southeast, y'all are number five. So get in your car, get to Columbia, and get a reservation if you can, because it is amazing. So we have had quite a great day today, and um, we are going to plate a pork chop for this beautiful presentation with everything we made today. So tell us a little bit about where you get the pork chops, and cut a couple of those chops up okay. for us. We'll do, and this is kind of the, the crown, we we'll call it the crown jewel of the, of the menu. We like to hang our hat on it, so to speak. Um, we get from um, a guy named Gray Moore, Carolina Heritage Farm. He's out of the PD in South Carolina, a little town called Pimplico near Florence. Um, and it's all heritage breed pork. Um, no concrete or anything on the property, and uh, he just does a great job with his I mean, I want to us, you so. guys to look at this. I mean, that, if when he said he did not brine his pork chops, this is why this meat is amazing. Okay, well, let's get going with this plating. All so right. you were busy during the break with some of this. I was, I was. Okay, I was, so um, tell us what you did to this pan and... So basically, you got the pork chops, just, I just use salt and pepper, no, no gimmicky or anything like that. A um, little bit of oil, just sear it um, and put it in the oven, a little, maybe a little bit of butter on top. Um, when I took it out, I took what we do at the restaurant, we take uh, smoked ham hocks and make a pork stock out of it, mm. um, strain it, and then we add that to the pan along with a little bit of coffee, kind of to mimic a little red eye jus and everything. So. Right, right. I remember my grandmother doing that. Well, the pan that you've used today is a Jed Curtis pan. He was also feeding in Okra magazine mm -hmm. so I'm making all these amazing <laughs> friends so let's can we get started plating sure okay. sure let's do it let's, uh, we'll first try some of, those, some of those great Brussels sprouts we had okay um, oh man and see the color is still there that mm -hmm. is what is so beautiful about it okay then we're gonna go to the uh, spoon bread my part my favorite part I think okay so. And of course, he's using a spoon. That's where spoon bread comes from. And it's just a really, really moist, look at that, um, cornbread. Okay, okay so. and then we'll put the, uh, I'll give you the best looking one. How about that? Oh, absolutely. Oh a little bit of that gosh. right there. And then we'll, um, we'll take this. And get, get some of that au jus in there. Mm. We'll take one more spoonful, put right on top of that spoon bread. Don't y'all wish y'all were in here with me right now? Oh my gosh, okay. Well, while you're doing another one, I'm gonna also speak to the fact that there are so many reasons to buy this November issue of Okra Magazine. Not only are you gonna learn more about Chef Wes, but they're also featuring Brigman Pottery that is gorgeous, beautiful, very talented woman. Natalie Dupree has a brand new book out that there's going to be a lot about that. It's kind of a memoir. And then the Galliard Terrace Farm, they are doing some amazing things over there and you're gonna learn a little bit about that. So we have got a fantastic giveaway today. 
we are going to give a subscription to Okra Magazine to somebody in every one of our markets. So what we want you to do is go to our Instagram and Facebook pages and all the instructions for what to do will be there. Oh my gosh, so that would go right And we forgot right one there. thing, we made this lovely tomato oh, jam. Oh yeah, the tomato jam. It is really good on top, so we got a little sweetness and oh, acidity to the dish like that. That and is amazing. Gosh, go. I might want a little bit more of that on mine. Go for it. You know, I'm all about some jam. It's that great on biscuits. That looks though. great. Okay, next week I'm going to continue more with Autumn, and we're going to kind of use some of Autumn's best with um, sweet potatoes and apples. So we want you to come back for that. And just remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I want you to come back and join me. Wes, I want to thank you so much for being it's my guest. pleasure being here. I certainly want to thank Eddie Wells, not only for what he has done, his dream has come true by owning this restaurant in Columbia where he worked while he was in college. So I want you to have the experience to go over there and enjoy that fine dining. Come back and join us again next week. No matter what you do, do it in good taste. To see what's cooking with the Very Vera Show, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and on Cottage Ketchup.